I think it's about time I make uh, a video about this. This is not a subject I really like talking about. I'll tell you guys right now. And part of the reason why I don't like talking about this is because this nearly happens no matter where I go or what I do or how things work out. This is a, a typical thing in my life. So typical, in fact, that I literally expect it. And I expect it so deeply that it's ridiculous. I shouldn't have to expect it, but I do. And I think what got me to a point of expecting what I'm about to talk about was honestly the fact that someone I loved so deeply, um, God and Jesus Christ had given me so many dreams about the secrets, the lies of this particular individual that I had a hard time believing that it was from God and Jesus Christ. I thought it was the enemy because it came with a lot of witchcraft. And the things that this person had shared with me, they had dreams of me doing evil things unto, I'll just say that individual. So I couldn't tell what was really going on on either side. But because of that last and final situation where I was able to truly see through this individual's mask of love, mask of friendliness, the mask that was so deep, you know, because if you're a liar and you're really good at lying and you're really good at denying the truth and all kinds of things, you're going to look like you're a good person. Everything about you is going to look like that. And it's really easy to fool a person who doesn't really, who really truly believes you to be a good person. And I'm the kind of guy where I give people the benefit of the doubt. But that doesn't mean that I sit there and I'm going to trust a person right there in bed. I'm the type of person who's like, okay, you know, let's see how things go. And depending how things go will determine how things can move forward, Right. You know, for example, I talk I talked to you guys about that coworker that I had. He actually turned out to be a lot better than I initially thought. <laughs> is the best way I could put it. He has his flaws, but he turned out to be a lot better than I initially thought. Now, obviously I keep my distance with everyone. I have my reasons why. And there's going to be reasons why I keep my distance with everybody. But I'm getting into that. This person I'm talking about had a very deep mask, very, very deep mask. When I say it's so deep, I mean it's so embedded into their character that they truly believe that they are good, that everyone else is bad, they are good, and only their decisions are correct, and everybody else is evil. But whenever, face, whenever they were faced with me, a mirror was reflected right back onto them. I mean, and it was so deep that I didn't know they were being convicted. I didn't know the reason why they kept on seeing Jesus Christ through me. I didn't understand that. You know, I've been told that before. I look like Jesus. I'm not trying to. I promise you guys, I'm not trying to. I, I, I used to have, I used to dress like a Puerto Rican would with the nice shades, all of that, man. I had the look. If I wanted to look like I was Hollywood status... Boy, you know I could, I could still pull that sucker off today if I really wanted to with the nice little fade and everything. I know how to dress, okay? I just don't dress like that no more, right? And I wanted I, I wanted to try it out. I was like, you know what? I always wanted to have long hair. My hero, I say my hero, I always loved the White Ranger from the Power Rangers shows, okay? I was all about the White Ranger. Forget everybody else. To me, everybody else was this immature little brat that was like the worst example of any ranger, okay, <laughs> is the best way to put it, that's how I felt, you know, um, of the females, I think I liked the, the yellow ranger the most, uh, don't ask me why, it's probably because she was probably, in, in my opinion, she may have been the more mature one, but I don't totally remember why, um, maybe it's because I was, I always had a, I'm not gonna get into that, um, but the point is, I, I always saw that and I was like, and one day I was like, you know what? Why don't I just do it? Why don't I just grow my hair? And I could never do it. I could never grow my hair because once it got to a certain point, 
it was like I felt so ugly that I felt like I needed to cut it. So finally, I just did it. I did it. I didn't care how ugly I looked. I did it. Let me tell you, it took forever. It took me about two, two and a half years. The first time I did it, it took me that long. Second time I did it, it took me about a year and a half, two years to grow it. Because at that point, it wasn't hard and I knew what to do and I knew how to take care of my hair. Where is I going? I don't know why I started talking about my hair. <laughs> oh, God. Anyways, because I don't remember why I started talking about my hair. <laughs> going back to the, the whole situation with the friend thing. All right. Um, this individual had a mask. And their mask had... Oh, yeah, the Jesus, the Jesus thing. Okay, so yeah, that's just to explain... That this was all unplanned. I forgot. That's the reason why. This was completely, entirely all unplanned. Um, so what I've come to realize is anyone that tends to feel convicted in some form, for whatever reason, sees Jesus Christ in my eyes. I've heard that from actual people. It might be because I know I'm walking with him and he's walking with me. I've always felt that way. Okay. I really started to feel that way when I truly started walking with him and obeying him in a different level than I ever have before. That's when it really started. And um, I started to change. My personality, everything about me started to change. So much so that it, it would do things to people and their demons would be churned. They would start to feel certain things happen, okay? Um, they would, and this happens with everybody. This doesn't just happen with one person. Anytime I'm around certain people, one of two things either happens. Their, their demons get kind of come out in a way or they get churned up. And if they don't come out completely, like if the person doesn't actually kick them out completely on their own, when they come back, they come back worse. They come back with all kinds of things. And before you know it, it destroys the relationship, right? Okay? Now, I say that to say this. This person has a lot. They were, they held a very deep mask. And because this was the final person in my life that I really, truly, deep down in my heart trusted. But once I saw past that mask, and I always have my doubts, but I was like, nah, this person wouldn't treat me like that. I was so very wrong so very wrong the dreams upon dreams upon dreams upon dreams that i had and then the conversations the amount of gaslighting that i had received in so many conversations where i was accused of things that i was just like but that's not me and then i realized oh crap dude i've been accused like this before in relationships in my past through my family constantly telling me that i'm doing this i'm thinking that i'm saying this i'm saying that this person was doing the same thing. The exact same thing. That's what this person was doing. They were sitting there telling me that um, I was evil. That I was taking what, what they were saying and twisting it on them. Or, you know, I was telling them evil things to abandon their family and stuff like that. And I was like, no, I'm not telling you to abandon your family. Read the Bible, man. Read it. <laughs> Read what it tells you to do. You can't be around sinners. You can't claim to be a good person and be around sinners. You can't be around sinners that worship other gods. They're going to encourage you to do the wrong thing. You can't be around that. Like I would, I would say these things point to certain things. Say these things point to certain things. My point is, once I saw through the mask, I started to see that the dreams I was having of all the lies that this person was telling everybody, the things this person was doing behind my back, it hurt. It hurt bad, man. The last person that I trusted. The last person. After already losing my children to two women that I also trusted. After already losing my brother to his mask when I realized he had one too. To losing some of my best friends that I called brothers. Some of my best friends that I called sisters not realizing that they were not best friends. To this day. 
to this day, I just had a dream about somebody of my past and God was showing me this person in this dream. This happens to be a female who betrayed me when I was real young, me and her. We, I'm not going to get into it, but um, I have spoken of, of this individual already. We were supposed to be in a relationship, but this girl was, she's, she, she was the type that she says that she was going to do something, but then she'll back out. And this was her pattern throughout her entire life. It never stopped. Finally, I just cut her off because I was like, this girl is not listening. She's not listening to the truth. She doesn't want to live by the truth. And she swears in her mind that she's a good person when a good person does not say she's going to do something and not do it. And she was that type to always say that she's going to do something and not do it. Always going after something evil, always liking and entertaining certain things that she shouldn't like and entertain. But that was her. I had a dream about this woman. And in this dream recently, she was basically in the dream. I was in it. She was in it. And she's on her phone trying to say she's need a, she needs a boyfriend. And how I interpreted that was she was trying to get me as a boyfriend or she's telling people that she has a boyfriend. And I just happen to be that person, even though I'm nowhere near this person. I don't talk to them. I'm entirely single and I'm staying that way. No way am I staying that way. I, I, I learned my lesson last year when I made my mistake, my final mistake that I didn't even intend on making. There's a confession video. That's one of the first videos on here because I deleted the rest of them from my past. That is the very first one. And y'all can look that up and see how bad. Good dude, I was in dire straits. And there's consequences that I have to deal with with that. I say I have to deal with it, but it's God and Jesus Christ haven't really told me that I have to deal with that. At least as of yet, they'll probably tell me something or not tell me something considering the rapture. Who knows? You know what I mean? But uh, anyways, due to that whole betrayal with that individual, I learned a lot of lessons from that entire friendship. And the biggest lesson I learned is I cannot put my heart and soul and mind into anyone. I can't. Because though many claim to know the enemy, many look upon me as though I'm the enemy. It might not start off that way, but eventually it gets that way. And then I become the enemy. For one reason or another. You know, like I spoke about my coworker. I didn't put any of his business out on this, despite how I was feeling, because it's not right to do so. There were things that I was experiencing with him that I have experienced in the past with many other people. And oftentimes what I try to do is I try to watch my words and my tones and everything, and I try to speak to God and ask him put, to put the words in my mouth of what you want me to say and what you want me to do. And how you want me to say it. I do that every time. Every single time. Every single day. This morning I did not pray to God in Jesus Christ. I asked for forgiveness. I forgot to do that this morning. I never do that. Never do that. At least I, I say I never do that. I have in the past. What I'm trying to say is my habits are usually that of I do it every morning. And I do it every night. That's what I'm trying to say. You see? Even now. I have to correct myself because I'm not perfect. I'm, I'm a human being. I live in this flesh. The flesh wants to sin against the spirit. Now, with that said, because of that, and, and I want to address this here so that way everyone understands. I've learned that when I go out there into the world, I have to make sure that I'm kind, loving, and caring no matter what. But my spirit, my soul, my heart, my mind... Because I know that people carry things that they don't know that they carry sometimes. Because people have been through traumas like I have. That a lot of which I've overcome. But that doesn't mean that they have. It's hard. And these past two experiences that I had with individuals... And I'm getting the feeling it's happening again. But I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Um, it kind of 
clarified that. It clarified the fact that there is nothing I can do no matter what to be friends with people other than to keep a distance. This is why I say to keep a barrier. This is why I say to protect your heart, protect your mind and your soul. A devil does nothing more and wants nothing more than to divide and conquer everyone. This is why I don't get too attached to anyone. Because I've learned that it's real easy to it's real easy to do nothing wrong and still be wrong. That's the best way I can say it. It's real easy to do everything right and still be wrong. It's real easy to do something wrong and not just be wrong for one tiny little thing. Oh no, it gets blown up all to another whole nother level. It's that easy. That easy. And in my life, it was always a ticking time bomb either way. Whether I did the right thing or whether I did the wrong thing, it was always a ticking time bomb. And it's still a repetitive nature in my life to this day. Why? Because I shake up people's demons. Demons that people don't realize they have. I shake them up. And it's not even me doing it. It's the Holy Spirit in me. The Holy Ghost. God and Jesus Christ in me. Because when you live in God and Jesus Christ, that's what's going to happen. That is exactly what's going to happen. People don't know the truth about themselves. It's unfortunate. But this is a truth I feel I have to share. That people are aware. So that you guys can understand that. It, or let me. Let me rephrase that. In the comment section. There was a lady who told me something. That confirmed something. That God and Jesus Christ have told me. Multiple times. They've told me. It's not your fault. Whenever I thought about my past. Whenever I thought about the decisions I made in my life. To do the right thing. Because my entire thing. My entire life was always doing it trying to do the right thing when it comes to these videos when it comes to talking to people and conversating even my words when it comes to making sure that I don't overstep a boundary it's always my what's on my mind is do the right thing and she said and uh, she goes ahead and said the Holy Spirit told her it's not your fault And all I could do was tell her, God has confirmed that many times. But to this day, I'm still struggling with accepting it. Not because I don't want to accept it. I really, truly want to believe and accept it. But because of, I guess because of my life. <laughs> this is really what it boils down to. It's like my very core programming has this little thing in it that makes me think about I don't blame anyone the first pro person I point the finger at is always me for something that goes wrong always me I had to train myself to think that it was somebody else's fault Literally had to train myself to do that. That's how deep it's embedded in me. That I have to stop. I've had to teach myself. Like give myself a personal program. the best way I could describe it. That says hold up. Er, put the brakes on. Don't go straight for the. Don't go straight for your own gut. Look in that direction. Reevaluate that. Look in that direction. Something inside that person. That does not like you. Something inside that person that is blaming you, all they're doing is reflecting, deflecting. 
<laughs> Funny thing is, God and Jesus Christ warns me. They warn me ahead of time about situations. So I know ahead of time through discernment who I'm going to probably prolongly talk to and who I'm not. And all it takes sometimes really is just a conversation with a person. All it takes is a conversation with a person. Now, my coworker, I, I told that man I loved him and I thanked him because I learned a lot from that man. But he and I both agree <laughs> we cannot be, you know, constantly around each other. There's things about me that are hard on him and things about him that are hard on me. I still consider him a brother in Christ. But the way I live, the things that I speak of, it can be real hard on people. And one thing I have learned is that the, the hard hearings that I have to say churn the demons within people and it's very difficult for people to hear that's why i'd rather do it on here on the screen because at least here if you want to hear it you can if you don't you can shut it off you can shut it off and if you got something negative to say it goes in the comments now whether i pay attention to it or not don't care I try to respond to everybody and I read I try to read everybody's stuff because I'm I'm treating this like if it was like if God was telling me, hey, I need you to go to my people. I need you to talk to my people. That's how I treat it. Like, OK, OK, I'm listening. So I treat this like a job almost. Like a mission that he sent me to do. That's how I treat this. That's how I'm going to treat it constantly. So, you know. God and Jesus Christ, they tell me, hey, share with them what they need, answer certain questions, do this, do that. And then other times they're just like, get point the finger at me, let them come to me. Give give them a little bit, but don't give it uh, don't give it all. Point the finger at me, let them search me out, let them seek me out. Depending on what it is, because I usually go to God and Jesus Christ to answer certain things. And other times it's just like I just answer because it's what I'm led to do. In the most honest fashion. But understand that. In this world. Part of the reason why. Some of the most. Spiritual people. Out there are so isolated. Is because we were all mishandled. By the world. We still are. Being mishandled sucks. Because you literally have to overcome traumas that no one else can really help you with other than God and Jesus Christ. There are people out there still making excuses for the evils that they've done, for the miscalculations, the accusations that they've done to others. I know, I used to know personally people that claim to love me, that believe to this day that I hurt them. Because I left when they didn't realize they weren't treating me right the entire time I was around. Saying this, that, or the other about me. Still blaming me to this day. Still haven't apologized. Still have not owned up to their mistakes. To this day. That refuse... I, let me tell you something. If I do something wrong and I know I've hurt somebody, let me tell you, I have apologized. And not only have I apologized, if I knew I couldn't get in front of a person because of one reason or another, like this one time in the Marine Corps, I was in boot camp. I didn't have a choice. There was a, a, a girl I wanted to apologize to. I wanted to go straight up to her and talk to her, but I couldn't face her for a lot of reasons I couldn't. One, I had a girlfriend at the time. The, it was in boot camp not a very good girlfriend and this girl that I had uh, I needed to apologize to I hurt I personally hurt her and it was all due to the fact that I just didn't want to deal with any more drama that's really what it boiled down to I hurt her to get her to hate me so that way neither of us have to deal with drama from other people should have never hurt her but I did in the end, I ended up getting hurt because I hurt an innocent person. 
So what did I do? While I was in boot camp, I wrote an entire letter. And, in, and when I say an entire letter... I mean an entire letter of an apology. I told her the truth. I confessed it. It was a letter. It wasn't... The, I didn't even want to give that letter. But I everything in me said, give this letter. Give this letter. Apologize. Do the right thing. And I'm just like scared. Scared because I knew I did something wrong that I needed a, to, to make up for. And I did. I gave, I gave the letter away to a friend that... A friend at the time that eventually gave it to her. But the point is, I apologized. I would have been on my hands and knees. <laughs> the dream that I told you guys with that one uh, that one girl in the white lingerie that basically signified she was a girl that um, I probably had intentions to marry me or it was a marriage proposal. I don't even know. It was a dream. What did I do? Even though I did nothing wrong, I loved the girl in the dream. So I was on my hands and knees begging, pleading with her. To the point where I knew she wouldn't believe me and I admitted to doing something that I didn't do to get her to believe me. I shouldn't have had to do that. But that's what I had to do in the dream. Only to be rejected at the end of the day. When you do something wrong, that desperately, that bad, even though I didn't do anything wrong. But imagine what it takes to get a person to trust you again. Yo, it takes a lot. You break somebody's trust, it's gone. You break somebody that gives that has already not trusted, it's gone for good. Now imagine what it looks like to trust anybody else out there. It's not easy. And one thing I've learned is after all these heartbreaks and all these heartbreaks with brothers and sisters and family and friends and so on and so forth, I've just learned to not not put my heart and soul into anybody because the first thing that's going to happen probably is more than likely at some point something is going to go bad not that I ask for it not that I go looking for it but simply because demons don't like me the devil does not like me let me tell you let me tell you they know what I'm capable of and they know that my words mean something and that I live in God and Jesus Christ in truth so they're going to do their best to paint this evil image about me to the world. And it's not just me. It's going to happen to all of you guys. Anyone of us who obey God and Jesus Christ 100% of the time. With that said, just wanted to share that. God bless you guys in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.